Hi guys, Frankie B from Frozen Sand with uh, another long overdue episode of working with Power Tools. Uh, as there <laughs> hasn't been really too much of, let's say, particular interest to actually do uh, a show around. Uh, and, but uh, with uh, 4.11 now into, uh, uh, well, let's see, preview version 7, uh, we started moving on to uh, working on progressing the uh, player model uh, part of the uh, development uh, further along due to the fact that, uh, uh, you know, they finally have a half-decent cloth uh, shader as well as a hair shader, which is uh, what we'll probably be touching on uh, uh, a bit, uh, certainly uh, a little bit more into the future. Depending uh, if this is the kind of thing you guys are interested in, uh, leave a comment or, you know, a thumbs up to encourage uh, uh, further, uh, it, let's say, investigation in this area because there's a... You know, this has been a, a very long process from uh, when we originally started uh, doing um, uh, character model, player model improvements for uh, HD under uh, FS Tech 1 using the MD5 system. And we're at the time we were doing a lot of investigating of how we were able to be to uh, make it a little bit, the, the whole process a little bit more let's say uh, more of a linear flow to it uh, a, a little bit more snapped into the uh, into the asset and content pipeline to make to make things a lot easier and as part of that process we were looking uh, initially at uh, integrating uh, Dad's uh, studio into the pipeline for character development. Um, there's a lot to be said about uh, what th uh, that pa particular package can do, uh, but uh, it did. It does um, require uh, a, a substantial licensing fee of about $500 uh, for for this particular use. Being able to use player models uh, that you can generate from DAS Studio in Unreal 4. But uh, his historic wise, um, the uh, let's see. At the time, we were looking at uh, the Genesis 2 framework but uh, um, uh, unfortunately the uh, it wasn't really um, let's say set up to do video game characters particularly in the area of power to two requirements and as well as the uh, geometry was uh, just too high to uh, justify uh, the the performance you know to be able to include that in as part of the of the uh, um, um, the budget let's say for for polygon limitations, I believe the character model then was about like 200k, which is a bit excessive, uh, versus uh, 34k of the current Genesis 3 uh, iteration. And to uh, top that all off, um, you can you can sort of cut out the number of polygons that you don't want to use. So in this case, uh, BK has been working on the clothing uh, end of it by um, using the Genesis 3, and then she's using GoZ plugin. To be able to bring the, that uh, framework into into ZBrush, and then she can more or less paint the clothing on that she wants using uh, you know if you're familiar with ZBrush, then you know that uh, that uh, 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 that uh, you can uh, you can uh, pipe that back and forth and, and create the, you know, the, the the amount of detail that you want, and then we can bring that into Unreal 4 and then cut out the stuff that we don't need. So in this case, the head and the hands and what have you. Uh, the problem with that, though, initially with the G2 uh, uh, framework, is uh, we uh, we wanted to be able to create expression sets so that the, so the player model can express emotions. So if the player is shot, it shows pain. But uh, let, let's just you probably see me uh, post this as a play blast uh, every once in a while. This is actually a player model. This is a player model that you will see uh, ultimately in Urban Terror HD. Uh, Anastasia, I believe, uh, but probably or. Uh, yeah, I probably I, I never really pronounced the name. I just know this is um, as you can see the label down here. This is what uh, Blade Killer has been calling this particular character. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, the um, uh, what you see is the clothing in geometry, but the the hands and and the, and the head are built on the G3 framework. So if I go ahead and hit play, you know what I think. I think if he did what those kids say he did, the guy deserved to have a bad thing happen to him. I mean worse than shame and a jail term. I mean something bad. They should take him just like you take a carrot and peel him down real slow. You know, real careful. Layer by layer, until you've got him peeled naked as an egg. And then you bring him to Hubbard Elementary and you lock him in the gym with 20 mothers with baseball bats. 
You put some Gatorade in there and some high nutrition snacks and maybe have an alternate or two who can substitute when one of the women gets tired. The son of a bitch. Okay, that's pretty good, eh? Uh, uh, but uh, remember, the, 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 uh, the morphing rule states that uh, you have a, ha to have a per vertex count between uh, the target and, and, uh, and the morph, or the, the, uh, the master and the morph target shape that you want to create the shaping to. But in this case, the update to, uh, uh, to the G3 model is you have an option of either using morph shapes or you can use clusters uh, or joint shapes. So there's about 75 joints that have been attached to the head to be able to move the face uh, corresponding to whatever cluster envelope that, it, that, uh, that falls under it. So uh, we can uh, now, it, we can now um, uh, refine and optimize any character model that we want down to the amount of geometry that we need and still maintain the ability to make the character talk or express, at least in Urban Terror HD, to be able to express emotions. So uh, it also opened up opportunity to be a little, let's say, a little bit more creative in areas that are not game critical, like, uh, uh, you know, menus uh, and what have you, as well as cuts, you know, maybe some cut scenes and, uh, and, and, and definitely taunts, you know. It'd be nice to have the character emote uh, personality. So um, obviously to be able to do that, we're going to need some uh, voiceover actors or whatever. So if anybody can wants to supply us a quote for doing voiceover work, we would, you know, by all means, uh, uh, send, a, send, send, uh, send me a PM or, or Blade Killer a PM, and uh, we'd be interested in hearing what you have to offer. But uh, uh, this uh, allows us to, uh, to um, you know, quickly iterate uh, the various different types of characters, and fo but focus a little bit more on, on creating uh, the clothing, which is, which is, you know, now the thing. Like the, the actual character itself uh, is is part of a process, uh, a procedural process. Uh, for the face expressions and, and what have you <clears throat> and of course now with hair with hair shaders you can see that uh, that the hair okay um, let's uh, let's uh, just kind of mention this off the top this is uh, a splash and go right at the moment you're seeing everything from from basically square one from me importing this and building the uh, character blueprint necessary to further develop but the ideal behind our pipeline is to be able to reuse and retask uh, various different items that are part of the character uh, component. And I'll, I'll show that off just a little bit more in just a second. So in this case, you can see that uh, we have boots, we have pants, we have a shirt, we have harness, we have gun belts, we have hair. Uh, I'm going to weed out or uh, remove the eyes because I want a set of custom eyes that uh, we can add uh, various different... Uh, um, uh, so we can... Um, oh, what's it called? Uh, we can... Um, uh, instant copy. Uh, various components of, of a character so if we make one set of eyes it's instant copied to all the different character models which cuts down of course on the uh, on the asset loading uh, requirements uh, you know it's 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 a cheap way of optimization you might want to call it uh, but in this case uh, I made various different uh, character components based on the same framework so in this case um, uh, the boots here I'll bring this over is a, a separate component as part of the composite of the main character. So, yeah, you can see we got some goofy lighting situations going on. Uh, uh, <laughs> as I said, this is just a, a splash and go, and it needs some, still needs a lot of serious work. Uh, as I mentioned, if you're interested in this stuff, uh, post comment and, and, and thumbs up and what have you, and uh, I'll, you know, make an attempt to do this a little bit more on an ongoing basis. But uh, as you can see, this, this creates a, a, a single point framework. So um, in this case, if I look at the blueprints here, you know, here's a totally different looking character. Uh, you know, I can even do a full body, uh, a full body injection. And that's what we're, that's another interesting thing about including uh, DAS Studio in the pipeline is injections as in being able to create different body shapes and form and what have you but it's still based on the same the same framework so if i hit play you know what i think i think if he did what those kids say he did the guy deserved to have a bad thing happen to him i mean worse than shame and a jail term i mean something bad they should take him just like you take a carrot and pee so modular in nature again uh hair is part of, is, is separate uh, and we can we can uh, trade them around if we wish 
uh, we can just open up the uh, open up the character blueprint. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go too off. Um, as I've said, it's uh, <laughs> this is a little uh, this is a lot more complex than 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 you might think. Actually, I can select a character if I go over to my details panel. I should now be able to. Uh, couldn't before, so I got in a habit into a bad habit. So if I select a hair and I look for um, I haven't really got everything kind of sorted into where they need to be. Uh, where Where is it? Oh, here we are. I think that's it. Uh, hair. Okay. If I select this hair here, I can just go ahead, I believe, and change it there. And different hairstyle on this character. Be easier to see if I just select it. So a totally different hairstyle. Select the character again. Uh, can change the hair color if I wish. I got some uh, a extra hair that I've added as well. And uh, we got kind of a blondish type right now. Okay, so if I got this selected again, go to hair and change the component hair. And, <laughs> and hair has been changed. Um, let's see, that uh, latent hair. I, I like the latent hair. No. Um, you know, kind of add different textures and different colors and what have you. So if I want to have the latent hair that's on this model to be onto that, this one here, I can swap that out. And we can go ahead and change that. And if you're into character model development, you know that the, <laughs> the most miserable thing in the world to try to do is to come up with the perfect hair for the character is the hair is what makes the character more than anything else. Uh, excluding, of course, eyes. How the eyes are able to express, you know. You know what I think? Hair is what you see I from a distance. I think if he did so what those kids say he here, did, it, the guy deserved to have a look bad right thing happen to him. The character I mean, worse mush. than. Okay, now uh, just uh, one more iteration here uh, as to the character. Uh, as I mentioned, you can make a, you can composite the characters any way you wish. So if we bring in a male, the male character. Okay, it's not. Once again, same framework. So if we hit the play... You know what I think? I think if he did what those kids say he did, the guy deserved to have a bad thing happen to him. I mean, All three characters are on the same pipeline. Term, as, and being driven bad. by single channel animation. They should take that, him just uh, like you, you only have to author one set. And so if you make an expression slow, set you know, for... for layer by for, layer. Until you've got him... The male model, it will work egg, with the female and, and vice versa. you bring him to... So... I think that's uh, all there is to it. I, uh, I, at some point, an interesting little test I want to try is to take the matinee fight sequence and to see if I can swap out the uh, the uh, characters and animation and, and have a little fun in that area too, just to kind of show something up. Now, I think that's really all I have today that I want to cover as far as this going. But uh, once again, um, you know, <laughs> what we have on the screen right now is as worst is about as ba as bad as it can be uh as in um you know we the, you know there's a lot of texturing work and improvements that can be done especially in uh in the uh, layering of the hair uh you know uh the, as well as creating a uh a subsurface uh, materials for the skin uh you know a proper uh, backlighting for the uh, the cloth and what have you uh, maybe even add some simulations. Uh, pointed out the boots. Uh, they use a material function rather than um, being driven by a diffuse color map. Like it does do, use a color map, to, uh, sort of speaking, but it uses more of a PBR type of substance material than it actually uses uh, your normal everyday kind of diffuse slash uh, normal map kind of uh, material that uh, is pretty common. Uh, well, if you're uh, familiar with the GDK or making anything for id Tech 3, then you know it's uh, very limiting as to uh, shader control. Okay, so um, hmm, is that all I need or want to fill at this time? Yeah, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a lot more things I have in mind, but uh, I want to kind of hold off on that from, from showing that off. 
But the big hold off right now, uh, the, the, the big hold off was waiting for a proper cloth and hair shader. And I think that now with uh, 4.11 that's available. So uh, uh, as well as we've, um, we've kind of decided on our character development pathway. So I think you're going to see a lot more interesting t types of uh, characters that we can come up with uh, for Urban Terror HD. Uh, in, in the future. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, thumbs up. Once again, thumbs up or or leave a comment. Thanks.